This is Sid Roth saying, I have a vision. Now is the set time to blow the trumpet in Zion. Shalom, Mishpocha. Shalom, family. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family, and we're the Mishpocha, the family with the Jewish heart, made up of Jewish and non-Jewish people that are brand new creations in the Messiah. Getting ready, Mishpocha, to blow the grandest shofar, all the grandest trumpet in Zion. We want everyone everywhere to hear the good news. And I have a book that I believe is going to so simplify you sharing the Messiah with Jewish people. This book, although there's some fabulously deep things in it. Most people that read it say it is extremely reader-friendly. The name of the book, The End of History, Messiah Conspiracy, absolutely proves that there was a conspiracy among the uh, Jewish rabbis to prevent Jewish people from Ever knowing that Jesus is the Messiah, it's been perpetuated even till today, but we've got the goods. It's God's time for mercy on Jewish people. It's God's time for mercy on the church. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, I shall not return until the Jewish people say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's the job of the end time church to be a John the Baptist, if you will, to prepare the way for the return of the Messiah. And how best do, can you do it? Well, at the fullness of the Gentile age, I'll give you a clue. Romans 11.11. Salvation has come to the Gentiles to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. You said, God, what is my call? I say, read the last part of Romans 11.11. Salvation has come to you for such a time as this to provoke Jewish people to jealousy. Philip Moore, I have him on the telephone. I'm speaking to him at his office in Atlanta, Georgia. I've got his book in my hand. We've got a supply of them. We're ready to send them out to you. Uh, It's, I mean, you have, I I just don't know where to begin and where to stop with this information. Uh, Most people have never seen these things. For instance, you have a chapter here on the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, Teach a little bit from that, Philip. Well, uh, one of the most interesting findings, I think, uh, to verify our, our belief is that uh, a, a very uh, astute uh, scholar named Norman Gold just wrote a book called uh, Who Wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls? And in there he points out that, uh, that the, it was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran that uh, the Judaism of that time believed in the Son of God, Messiah. Now, if I... Uh, I have a book of uh, Gerald Siegel, who wrote The Jew and the Christian Missionary, who attempts to refute uh, Jews for Jesus, Messianic Jews, Evangelical Christians, and their beliefs of the prophecies. And he says in there that, is, that uh, that is a Greco-pagan type of belief that is not within Judaism. Of course, his book is 14 years older, but nevertheless, the fact that Dr. Gold verified these points uh, shows us that what the New Testament teaches isn't pagan but Jewish, and that uh, it's not out of line with what the rabbi should believe or the Jewish people, and it's support that Jesus is who he said he was. Well, you have some very interesting things about China in the book and about uh, the former Soviet Union, uh, especially the KGB. Uh, amplify a little on that. Well, uh, well, in, in chapter two, chapter nineteen is about Russia, and chapter two is about. Uh, why war on planet Earth? One of the biggest questions, especially a rabbi in today, will, will ask is, well, if Jesus was a Messiah, why didn't he bring peace? And uh, he said, it was very interesting, I was just thinking of it when you were announcing the program, uh, Jesus said, you will not see me until you say, blessed be that comes in the name of the Lord. And this is what he told her, until he is nationally received, the first time he was rejected, but until he is nationally received by the majority of his people, Israel, uh, there won't be any peace. And it, it, when the Messiah comes, there will indeed be peace. And we believe because he was rejected the first time, that's why there's no peace. And in chapter 3, uh, I mentioned that the ancient rabbinical Judaism, and I prove, I believe, that uh, believed in two comings of the Messiah. 
and uh, and that he would come once to suffer and the second time to bring peace. Yeah, was, yes, but believe. but today we, I mean, I was raised in a traditional Jewish synagogue. I tell you, there is no mention of what the Talmud says about two comings of the Messiah or or two messiahs. Uh, there's no mention of that. Why is it? Well, I believe they, are, they want to dissuade uh, belief in, 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 in Jesus uh, and uh, try to say that it's not Jewish when it certainly is. And, and that the second coming of Jesus, we believe, will be to bring peace and stop war because uh, look what's happening now. I mean, the, the predictions in the Bible about uh, bringing peace have to do with bringing peace in a world that's so so war-struck that uh, it's awesome. I mean, today we have nuclear weapons. Regina Albatz, I, I quote her, who wrote a, book, wrote a book called A State Within a State, said that the KGB, she wrote in 94, when everybody was saying the KGB was gone, had, she said it had never left, it will resurface. I quote uh, Tom Gerald he was, when he did a 2020. Well, what do you mean resurface? It's not going to resurface. It's already exists. It's they, they traded in their spy uniforms for business suits. Right. That's exactly, <laughs> that's more or less what she said and. uh but a lot of people were saying that KGB is it's all being neutralized. That Russia is going to be, and uh, it, not many people know that uh, that was a that was a broadcast not long ago that uh, a 2020 broadcast where they they proved and they they found documents that uh, that, that people that had been in Vietnam uh, uh, and Korean War was shipped over to Russia and were working there. They probably were killed in ninety when they were when ninety one when they were bringing all the quote peace out and all but uh, uh, in that broadcast they said that certain the Russians refused to open certain military files because it, it proved they, they, they found some but the majority of them they wouldn't let them open because it would show how many of our men were anonymously buried under tombstones in Russia and identified and I, I don't believe they've changed I wish that, uh, that they had and that they would and I believe a lot of the people are sincere but I believe the government is going to close the gap on the people again and only the return of Yeshua to come and and, and save Israel from a Russian uh, invasion will bring uh, a true peace to this planet and at that time the rabbis will say Baruch Abalashem Vadonai blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord and realize who he was but I, I'm concerned not about that I am concerned about those Jewish people that are going to die between today and that day without knowing the Messiah because of the Messiah conspiracy by the rabbis. Philip, you have the most amazing information in your book about people like Golda Meir and Einstein, some uh, amazing letters like, for instance, tell me about this letter on page 500 of your book. That's, that's a, a letter that Einstein wrote to uh, Professor Winters, and uh, he he really wanted uh, these Newton papers. He was in December of 1940 to be to be made public. Well, what do you mean? What Newton papers? The religious papers. He thought it was it sh he believed it showed how the the unique workings of the scientific genius of Newton could be traced to his beliefs in religion and the Bible, and. And uh, he was so fascinated, he, he wrote Harvard, Yale. I mean, nobody would receive these papers. You know, it was Einstein wrote Harvard and Yale to get the information on Newton? Yeah. Well, there, there are letters in the Yehuda collection that, that indicate, that show how these writings were being politely turned down. I saw them myself. I, uh, what, what, was the mo what, what was the motivation to turn them down? Well, they just, a lot of people for years thought they were just a pile of junk. And uh, it, Professor Popkin has done such a wonderful job in some of his works of, of UCLA. Professor Popkin has, uh, had shown that, uh, how valuable these papers are and that they, they were turned down, but they finally were willed to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And they're, they're going to be released or they may be as we talk on CD-ROM. At the time I was doing this research, I had the hardest time to get permission. These Einstein letters, I have two in here that that are unpublished. Well, was Einstein a believer in the Messiah? I believe he, I believe he may, very well may have been. Uh, let, let, let me read this quote on page 609 of your book by Albert Einstein, dated October 26, 1929. Quote, I am a Jew, but I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. 
No one can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. No myth is filled with such life. Well, I'll tell you something. If he wasn't, uh, not too many Christians can speak so lovingly about Jesus like, like he just did. Page 622. This really gets me. Golda Meir. Was she a believer? Was she a Messianic Jew? Well, uh, her doctor, Larry Samuels, was an evangelical Christian, and he would read the scripture, and even her family would ask him to come and read the scripture to her. He became a very good friend of hers over the last year of her life. And uh, I have a letter uh, by Grant Livingston, that, uh, uh, which, which shows that uh, at least a friend of Larry Samuels did make the statement that... Uh, that she was, uh, that she did receive the Messiah Yeshua before she died, and uh, through all of these uh, readings of the prophetical scriptures, and realizing how important things are, as we all do uh, before we die, if we know we're getting close to that point in our lives. Well, Philip Moore, I want to thank you for being my guest on the Messianic Vision, and even more importantly, I want you to have the research that Philip Moore has gathered, uh, it, it, it is so phenomenal that I, I just wish every Christian in America would look at it. It's got to reinforce your faith to such degrees. But then you've got the information of one of the greatest conspiracies that has ever been perpetrated against the people, the, the, the messianic conspiracy involving the rabbis and the Jewish people. This book is available for... $29, that's postage paid, took 12 years for Philip to gather this information. It's called The End of History, The Messiah Conspiracy. I want to make it available for you, $29. Did you know that our television show, as well as our radio show, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, is available on our webpage? Why don't you check us out, www dot sidroth dot org that's www dot sidroth s i d r o t h no space in between the sid and roth dot org this is the shabbat broadcast and i want to bless you the lord bless you and keep you the lord cause his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord grant you his shalom his peace, his supernatural peace, in the name of the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach Tzikino, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness. <laughs> If you would like to receive a complimentary copy of our bi-monthly teaching newsletter, cassette catalog, or information about becoming Mishpocha, write to me, Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Or call our order-only line, 1-800-548-1918. To place a credit card order, call anytime, 1-800-548-1918. 1918. For all other calls, the number is 912-265-2500. That's 912-265-2500. For a cassette tape of this week's broadcast, send $5 to Sid Roth, Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia, 31521. Look us up on the web, www dot sidroth dot org that's www dot sidroth dot org